Hey, everybody, Dear Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice along Kageyuki Shiraishi's route. We should be closing in on the end here. The executives of Adonis have all been arrested. Someone outed them. I had the feeling I know who it was. But let's see how things fall out from here. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Mochida, sorry for the sudden imposition, but can we get a few people from special preventions? Someone rushed into the office. I think that was a Division 1 investigator that was with Morioka. Uh, I don't mind. Has there been a crime? Yeah, a police officer was murdered at Shinjuku Garden. Shinjuku Garden? Could it be another one related to Adonis? I let that slip before coming to my senses. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. It's fine. We found the usual Roman numeral and coin. There's no mistake that it's Adonis related. What the hell? Normally, we deal with it on our own. But with the mass arrest this morning, we're shorthanded. Can I ask for your cooperation? Of course. Hoshino, let's go. Y yes This is suspicious because this is where it all began for me. We hurried to the scene and quickly started providing crowd control, but there were just so many people there. The mass arrest, combined with yet another incident, sparked the people's interest. When Shinjuku was newly quarantined, people would avoid the incident sites out of fear. They must have gotten desensitized to it by now. That sight seemed abnormal to me. Hoshino, they're fine. Let's head back. Yes. Careful not to get tased. They murdered a police officer with her gun. Is that supposed to be revenge for the arrests? Adonis has always wanted to highlight crimes that made the police look bad in some way, shape, or form. We talked about these things, and I saw a familiar silhouette out of the corner of my eye. Huh? Shiraishi? Because he was across the street, Shiraishi didn't notice me as he strode off. Hmm? What's wrong, Hoshino? Nothing. It wasn't odd for a profiler to receive an order from Investigations HQ to go to the crime scene. I'm sorry, it's nothing. He must have gone to Shinjuku Garden where the incident took place. Shiraishi has so much to do. I better work hard too. I motivated myself to do better and followed after Mochida. December 22nd, 9.30pm After returning to the station, I looked through the emails that someone else had filtered and wrote a report on them. There were a lot more than usual, so it took quite a bit of time. I confirmed that there were no mistakes and took the documents to Mochida. Mochida, please look these over. Yeah, hold on. I watched him look through the documents as I turned my attention to the clock. It's already past nine. I wonder if Shiraishi's work calmed down yet. Yeah, it looks alright. It should be good. You can go home for today, Hoshino. Thank you. Now we gotta find him. Before I get changed, I better give Shirashi a heads up. I sent a message saying I'd finished work and headed to the changing room. After getting changed, I picked up my cell phone to take a look. No response. He must be busy with work. Unlike SRCPO, field ops support was a small team. When incidents occur like today, I was sure they got really busy. Hello? Oh, Mukai? This is Hoshino. Hoshino? I was about to head over to where you were. Huh? I thought the director went to your area, but considering how you sound, I'm guessing that's not the case. He's gone. Yes, ever since we parted ways this morning, I haven't seen Shiraishi. I saw him in the commercial district earlier, so I thought he was going to a crime scene. He did say he was going to the investigation, but he hasn't come back since. I tried calling, but he's either turned off his phone or he's not answering. I have no idea where he could be. Trying to reassemble that bashing coalition? Shiraishi has a tendency to get tunnel vision when he finds something that interests him. He might have found something at the scene, and he's intently studying it. You understand the chief's bad habits. You impress me, Hoshino. The most annoying thing is that those habits lead to solving mysteries, so none of us can complain. But we have a pile of work left to do. He needs to be more considerate of us. I, 
I agree. Oh, you know, if you see the director, tie a rope around his neck and drag him back here. Maybe not a rope, but I'll tell him to go back. After I parted ways with Mukai, I checked my phone again, but I still hadn't gotten any response from Shiraishi. Has he really got up and gone and disappeared on me? The number you have dialed is currently unavailable. The phone you are trying to reach may not have reception or may not be turned on. She's right. He must really be concentrating. I can't go back alone, so I should ask Yanagi what to do. I called Yanagi and explained the situation, and he said he will send Enomoto. Hey, Hoshino, did you wait long? Not at all. Thank you for coming. I hope Shirashi doesn't focus too hard on the investigation and end up going overboard. While still worrying about Shiraishi, I headed back to the office with Anamoto. It still gets me that they call it the office in this route, because I keep thinking, going to the office, we're going back to work, going back inside the building again? Even after returning to the office, Shirashi still had not responded. He was so worried recently, and now he's not even responding. I wonder if he's just really focused on the investigation. I should have said something when I saw Shirashi back then. While restless and worried, my phone suddenly vibrated in my hand. Uh, Shirashi? Of course not. Oh, it's Mukai. Or should I say, oh, it's Mukai. I felt embarrassed for jumping to conclusions. I calmed myself down and then answered the phone. Hello, this is Hoshino. Hoshino, hear anything from the director yet? No, he hasn't responded since I sent him a message right before I left the station. I see. You were with him until the morning, right? Did you happen to notice anything strange about him then? Huh? What's the matter, Mukai? Did something happen? <sighs> Hoshino, please stay calm when you hear this. There was a murder earlier on the sidewalk of Block 1 of Kabukicho. Hmm... The victim is the Prime Minister's son, Rei Mikuni, who was stabbed in the heart with a knife, and he died almost instantly. That... does that mean Adonis made their move? No. According to the murder weapon, eyewitness testimonies and security camera footage, the perpetrator is... It's highly likely that it was Kageyuki Shiraishi. Huh? I couldn't understand what she was saying. My mind just went blank. The perpetrator? What is she saying? What are you saying? <sighs> she says stay calm. Mukai, please don't joke around about these things. I'm not joking. Hoshino, at the station it's already... That's not possible. This has to be some kind of mistake. Hoshino, what's wrong? Noticing that something was obviously amiss, Yanagi called out to me. Shiraishi is... I couldn't find any words after that. I still couldn't come to terms with what Mukai had told me. Yanagi, this. Sasazuka showed the screen of his laptop to Yanagi, and Emoto and Kazuki also peered in. What is this? Witnessed? Murder? The footage of Rei Mukini getting stabbed is being spread over social media. And the silhouette here, it's Shiraishi. What? You're talking crazy! Ugh. Evil twin! When Enomoto saw the picture on the screen, he was forced to come to terms with the fact that this was true. What's going on? Hoshino, who are you with? Well, I'm with Yanagi. No, I'm in the building that Shirashi frequently visits. I see. I'm glad to know you're not alone. There were rumors about you and the director, so I think you're going to be questioned. You'll probably be seeing everyone very soon. Sasazuka noticed something and tapped a few keys and showed us his screen. It's footage from outside the office? There was a car stopped outside, and a man in a suit and a couple of police officers exiting. I guess they're here to pick me up now. It's Minagishi of Division 1. Did he come here for some questioning? He's a big shot rising up the ranks fast. He's also in charge of the X-Day investigations. There's only one reason why he'd come personally. This visit is obviously related to the incident with Shiraishi. 
But... I hesitated to tell you, but I can't stay quiet about this. Hoshino, please stay strong. I'm here anytime you need me. Thank you. Right now, I still don't know what's going on. I'll call you once things calm down. I hung up the phone, but everything that just happened still doesn't seem real. Shirashi wouldn't commit murder. This had to be some kind of mistake. But if he were dragged into the incident for some reason... I was worried about how he's doing, and the worries just continued to build up inside. I still hadn't gathered my thoughts, but there's already a knock on the door, and Yanagi answered. It's been a while, Yanagi. I didn't think I'd ever come visit you like this. You seem to be doing well. Cut the chit-chat. You're here to ask about the incident Shirashi is suspected of committing, right? Oh, word gets out fast. I've heard that he frequents this place, so I thought you might know something. May I come in? Sure. Seiji Minagishi, so I guess it's the first time we've seen him in this route. Oh, she's here too. How convenient. My name is Seiji Minagishi of Division 1. N nice to meet you. I'm with the special regional... Ichika Hoshino of Special Preventions, I presume. I've heard that you were with Shiraishi and conducted the investigation that led to solving the September and October X-Day cases. Did you notice anything suspicious about Shiraishi recently? Nothing. I still don't believe that Shiraishi is the one who committed this crime. I don't know where you may have gotten your information for the case, but there's no denying that he is the murderer. <laughs> After leaving the Shinjuku department this afternoon, he went to Kabukicho to kill Mikuni. The security footage has proof of that. Normally, I wouldn't say something like this, but I am under direct orders of the police chief. If you are assisting him in some way, it will ruin your career. I have no intention of doing that. I, I really don't know anything. Minigishi, she hasn't been able to contact Shiraishi, so she came here looking for help. Don't assume that she's part of the incident. Then, what about everyone here? Nothing to say. Beats me. Man, I barely even said anything to that guy. <laughs> Yanagi, seeing you like that, it appears that you didn't notice anything either. Or rather, you have no intention of telling me. It's a great help to us to know that your relationship with Kagayuki Shiraishi runs deeper than we initially thought. With Shinjuku being quarantined, he doesn't have anywhere he can run to. It's only a matter of time before he is caught. We'll assume there's a higher chance he will try to make contact with you and increase patrols in this area. Now, if you'll excuse me. After Minagishi left, the tension in the room seemed to vanish instantly. You look pale. Are you alright? Yeah. Relatively, I guess. Um... This has to be a mistake, right? Shirashi wouldn't murder. It's one thing if he was indirectly involved, but there is hard physical evidence against him. However, the evidence seems way too obvious. <sighs> when I talked to him on the phone, he didn't seem like he was all that bad a guy. I guess you can never tell. The phone? You knew Shirashi before you came to stay here. No, when this one here stayed out for the night, he called me and we talked. S stayed out for the night? Hoshino, you're... But please don't misunderstand. I just fell asleep at his house because I was so relieved after solving the incident. That's what he said, too. He said that you were so serious-minded that you'd been on the edge the whole time. Huh? And with me, too. About you, Kazuki? He said that you cared about me, and that I should be sure to take better care of you, too. Stuff like that. Really? Well, that's extremely surprising. I thought he was a nosy guy then, but it's weird for someone with that kind of personality to go out and murder someone. I honestly don't want to believe it. It's hard to know what he's thinking, and we're supposed to be partners. Setting aside motive and chain of events, I'm not convinced that he would do something like this so thoughtlessly. Should I have worked on solving murders for years? He wouldn't do this without a reason. You guys... Shiraishi is a member of this office. We need to get to the bottom of this. Minagishi said they have security camera footage. 
Let's try and pinpoint the crime scene. Sasaka returned to his seat and started typing on his keyboard. Can you find out the time of the incident? Easy. Three minutes. <sighs> Sasasaka continued to stare at the screen while typing on his keyboard, but he soon looked up. Found him. It's Shiraishi. On the screen of his computer, there was a cobblestone sidewalk and Shiraishi standing there. Someone from the other side walked toward him while avoiding the crowd. I've seen him on the news before. He's Rei Mikuni, the Diet member. After noticing Mikuni, Shiraishi also started walking toward him. It looked like they lightly bumped into each other, but... <gasps> Mikuni lost his footing, and a knife was stuck into his chest. Shiraishi remained motionless and simply stared down for a while. After a passerby screamed, he started to run from the scene. <sighs> it wasn't definitive from this angle. Let's switch to another camera. He switched to a camera with a different angle, and we could see Shiraishi's hands. The moment he bumped into Mikuni, Shiraishi was holding on to the knife. That's enough. I couldn't bear to see anymore, and looked down. Sasazuka stopped the security camera footage without saying anything further. Sasazuka, is there a possibility that this camera footage has been doctored? I'll check. Sasazuka started up some kind of software and began analyzing the footage. This is no time to be in shock. I have to snap out of this. My mind wanted to, but my heart just couldn't. Seeing the actual footage made me feel like my brain was breaking. But, but, isn't it kind of weird? Even if Shirashi was after Mikuni's life, why would he do that in a busy street? I feel the same way. It's obviously careless. And with the weapon and footage, it almost seems like he purposely left the evidence behind. Also, Yanagi. The analysis is finished. No traces of it being doctored. <sighs> Where could Shirashi be right now? I managed to ring out those words but the foundations of my reality were crumbling. If we follow the cameras in the direction he ran off, we can find out where he's gone. But I'm sure the police already did that. While saying that, Sasazuka tries to follow Shiraishi's path. <laughs> I stared at the screen intently. It very clearly showed the Shiraishi that I knew well. Why did he do this? What happened? I had so many questions, but nobody could answer any of them. The camera managed to go all the way to the residential district before the footage stopped. I managed to glean some information. Two years ago, Adonis had attempted to assassinate the Prime Minister. The security detail has gotten tighter since then. But, on the day of his death, Rei Mikuni did not have his security team with him. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Yanagi's words go in one ear and out the other. Then, I hear a strange voice behind me. That was by the request of the person in question. Uh huh? Uh, Okazaki? Okazaki nonchalantly came in through the window, as if he had been listening into our conversation the entire time. He probably has. Y you're the guy from yesterday. How'd you get in here? This is the fifth floor. Thanks for that refreshing reaction. I use this all the time as a shortcut. <sighs> Okazaki said it so matter-of-factly that it left Kazuki speechless. Actually, what happened to the alarm? Why didn't it activate? Oh, it was too much trouble to avoid it yesterday, so I purposely tripped it. Oh, <laughs> that's what that was about. But you need to place more sensors to avoid leaving gaps on the outer wall. It's easy to avoid them like this. Thanks for the warning, and... No one invited you here. What do you want? I wasn't invited, but Shiraishi said I could come back tonight when I was here yesterday. Well, he's not a member of the club anymore. So invitation rescinded. And now that same Shiraishi is wanted for the crime of murder. Oh, I just figured that everyone would be pretty worried. Aww. He started talking about security teams, so I figured it was the right time to pop in. You said he didn't have his team with him because he wanted it that way? 
That's right. According to his security team, it was business as usual until the last minute. If he sent the bodyguards away, does that mean that he had made plans with Shiraishi or something? Ever since the attempted assassination two years ago, Shiraishi contributed a lot to the arrest of high-level Adonis executives. The Prime Minister personally congratulated Shiraishi and Reimi Kuni also attended, so we can be certain that they knew each other. If they continue to meet with each other, they might not need to keep bodyguards close by. The motive is unknown, but if Mikuni wasn't feeling alarmed, then it wouldn't be all that difficult to murder him. Even if what Shirashi did was a fact, he must have had his own reasons. But why now of all times? Adonis would make contact tomorrow. Shirashi had taken the initiative to protect me from them. So why would he do something like this at the worst possible time? Considering the knife, it was difficult to think that this was just an impulse killing. I have to switch my mindset. Yanagi's right. What's most important right now is to figure out the truth. I couldn't avert my eyes from reality if that was what I wanted to accomplish. Because the Prime Minister's son is the victim, Police Chief Takeda has taken over the case. Right when the police was close to regaining their reputation because the Adonis executive's arrest, this happens. They seem like they're intent on putting out fires. We're not getting any information, so even I don't know the truth. But, there's one thing bothering me. What's that? You guys here just think that I'm getting in the way, don't you? Huh? Well, what's that supposed to mean? That's not true, right? <laughs> oh, Ichika, you cannot read a room, can you? I looked to the other office members for their agreement, but nobody agreed. You guys! Well, that's the usual response, so it's fine. What I wanted to say is... Direct or indirect, Shirashi isn't the kind that would ever welcome me. And yet, he purposely said yesterday that I should come by today. If he was going to commit a crime, why would he tell me to come here today? Oh. What was Shirashi thinking? Well, I'll come back if I find out anything. After saying that, Okazaki went back out the way he came, through the window. Okazaki's right. Shirashi specifically called him here tonight. If he had planned to commit the crime today, he knew he wouldn't be able to meet Okazaki here. So he knew that he wouldn't be present, and... Could it be that he specifically wanted Okazaki to come here in case Adonis tried to make contact? It was only a supposition, but it was a reason that seemed to make some sense. Uh, but what is Okazaki supposed to do exactly? Considering Shirashi's feelings for me, there was even less reason that he would have to commit this horrible crime. So in the end, what reason could Shirashi possibly have for committing this crime? Considering Shirashi, it's more likely that he did this for Hoshino rather than himself. As a compromise? A trade? Huh? The night two days ago, when he told us that Adonis was after you. Shirashi came over here and bowed to us, asking for our help. Oh my god, he bowed to you? And that surprised me, too. Until then, he'd expressed no interest in other people, so if his desire to not want to see you get harmed manifested in the most extreme way. He killed Mikuni to protect the stupid cat here. If that's his motive, his carelessness makes sense. Wait, I'm not worth all that. Why would killing Rei Mikuni somehow be protecting me? After the September and October x day incidents, should I she knew full well where I drew the line and could never approve of crossing? He has no common sense, does everything at his own pace, and he's a genius at stirring up trouble. I sense some annoyance in his voice. <laughs> you think? Y Yanagi? I've known him for a while, but there's still quite a lot I don't understand about him. But he'd never do anything like this without reason. The only thing we can do is to find him before the police do, and hear him out. That's our only course of action. I had known him for a little while, but this was the first time I'd ever seen Yanagi so emotional. Yanagi, Enomoto, Sasazuka, even Okazaki. They're all worried about Shiraishi. They want to believe him. If Shiraishi was here, he'd probably say, That's not true. 
It doesn't matter what Shiraishi thinks. If he's going to go and do this, then we'll pursue it our way. I'll gather information on the incident. The police chief is taking charge of this. That's not going to be easy. Be that as it may, I can't just sit around. We need all the information we can get. I need all of you to gather everything you can. Who's directly involved with the incident and would talk to me? Uh, is that a choice I have to make? Ah, Sakuragawa. My fellow former coalition member. If Sakuragawa was assigned to do the field check, then she might be privy to information that I wouldn't be. I decided to take a chance on that and waited for Sakuragawa to pick up the phone. Hello, Sakuragawa. Oh, Sakuragawa, this is Hoshino. There is a favor I'd like to ask. Calm down, Hoshino. I knew you'd be contacting me about Shiraishi. I'd love to help you, but that's not going to be possible this time. I see. So there's information you can't release. It's not like that. We were only allowed to perform the most basic tests this time out. They said the higher-ups would take over, and told us to head back. To be honest, I'm pretty ticked about it. <laughs> oh, but there's one thing. There was something I did notice that maybe I can tell you. What is it? Well, this might not be the best news for you, but do you still want to hear it? Yes, please tell me. Alright. The cause of the death and the murder of the Diet member Rei Mikuni was a single stab wound to the heart. It's not a simple amateur technique. An amateur would typically hit the ribs. That seemed quite unusual to me. Yeah, so... Back to his childhood, I was suspecting he was probably one of those kids who were raised as an assassin. <laughs> Although, just because you're not used to it doesn't automatically mean you'd fail at it. Should I only stabbed him once with a knife, right? Yes, one stab with no hesitation or remorse. Who knows what happened between those two? There's so much I don't know. But why would Shirashi go and do something like that? That's what I need to know. Well, that's exactly like you. But what I do won't change. Yes, thank you for the information. I hung up the phone and let out a sigh. Everyone but Sasazuka was making calls to gather information. But from the bits and pieces of their conversations, I can tell they're having trouble. Because the victim is a politician, the higher-ups and guards have tied the investigator's hands. I'm sure there was a political reason for the chief to take charge of this. Without information, it'll be quite difficult to find Shirashi before the police do. His cell phone could be used to pinpoint his location, so I'm sure he'd already discarded it. There was no way for us to contact him. What can I do? Hoshino, I know you're worried about Shirashi, but you need to rest. Yanagi, but... Someone from Adonis is still planning to make contact with you tomorrow. It'd be stupid if you end up caught out in an emergency because you hadn't slept. <sighs> I understand. I'll leave you all to it then. I bowed and headed to the other room next door. I sat down on the bed, but my mind was still racing with thoughts of Shiraishi. We promised to celebrate Christmas. Why? I clenched the strap on my cell phone and tried my best not to cry. Oh. December 23rd, 1.08 p.m. Only five hours left before Adonis' deadline. Is she actually going to be part of this bargain? Yanagi called me over, and we sat across from each other. We don't fully know the reason why Adonis is after you. But, if you were directly attacked, you're eligible to be placed in protective custody. I read the words Yanagi wrote down and nodded. I thought that there was nowhere to run, but the same goes for the others. If their motive was to take me to the organization, I would be cleared to fire my weapon out of self-defense. That information would be immediately transmitted to the police, and I'd be an attack victim. The perpetrator would be trapped in the building, and the police would be able to capture them. I'd be protected by the police as the victim. That was the last-ditch plan Yanagi told me about. I didn't know that not only did they set up security, but a way to imprison intruders, too. Shirashi set it up prior to disappearing, and according to Sasazuka, it functioned correctly. He did a lot of thinking ahead, huh? Because Shirashi caused the incident, the police have increased their patrols in the area. Entering the building would be one big trap. 
And if I go into protective custody, Adonis won't be able to make a move that easily. One thing to worry about is that when the police put me in custody, the collar will be revealed. But I won't give in to their threats anymore. If they're trying to bring me to their side, it'd be a bad idea for them to kill me without reason. Well, the fact that we declined them and resisted them, that's a reason for them to kill me. All I could do was remain strong and push through this challenge with my own will. I wish that you would always be yourself. Don't forget that. <sighs> yeah, those sounded like parting words. I remembered the words Shirashi said to me. I believe those words came from his heart. I will do what I can right now. In order to meet Shirashi and hear a side of the story, I needed to force Adonis back right now. Shirashi, where are you? I didn't know where he is or what he was doing. I worried about that more than myself. As the sun descended, everyone was still gathering witness information on Shiraishi. As night fell, we started to prepare for the potential attack. Yanagi and Enomoto had their firearms readied, and Sasazaka monitored the security cameras that they placed in the area. Hey, I don't have a gun, but if there's an emergency, should I have a weapon too? Don't worry about me, just focus on protecting yourself. <sighs> Each second felt like an eternity. Ten minutes until the announced time. I held my firearm and gathered my breath. And at that moment... What? The patrols are pulling back. Not a good sign? Huh? I looked at the footage next to Sasazaka and saw the police officers frantically leaving the building. Did another incident occur elsewhere? Something by Adonis? No. I was intercepting their radio chatter, but nobody said anything like that. Then why? Ah! Suddenly, it seemed like an explosion went off. Violent shaking caused me to lose my balance. W what the heck? Something exploded on the second floor. The entire floor is on fire. What? There's no evidence of the sensors being tripped. How the hell did they plant it? Sasazaka, you can figure that out later. Is the fire going up the stairs? Not yet. Seems like they purposely left us the way out. They're trying to smoke us out of the building and get at Hoshino. I won't let them. Inamoto, calm down. I'm going first. You prioritize their safety. Yanagi, but... Without being able to stop him, Yanagi leaps outside. But the next instant... Uh! Another explosion hit, and the building was rocked again. I lost my balance a second time. Hoshino, you okay? Y yes What was that explosion? Part of the third floor is up in flames. It seems like they specifically set the explosives so the building doesn't collapse. What about Yanagi? I can't get anything from the cameras because of the smoke. The sensor stopped working after the explosion. Setting up explosives while slipping through all their sensors is like... Hey, there's no time to waste. We gotta get out of here. I'm worried about Yanagi, but we're out of options. All three of you, follow me. Anamoto takes the lead, and we all head to the stairs. The smoke had spread more than we imagined, and our visibility was poor. We still managed to climb down the stairs despite the uneven footing and headed to the ground floor. Everyone's still here? We're almost there. Move! Don't stand still! It's dangerous! S sorry Hoshino, Seaweed Head, you here? Yes! Stop screwing around in times like this. Keep moving. I can't see them, but hearing their voices and knowing that they were all right gave me relief. Yanagi, who went out first, must be safe too. While thinking that, we go down the steps one by one. Uh! An explosion nearby knocked my upper body back, and I slipped. I'm falling! I tried to grab it wherever the railing should be, but I didn't make it in time. With no sense of direction, I fall. But in that instant, someone grabbed my arm. Oh, Sasazuka, thank you. Well, it's not Sasazuka. 
So Sasuke was behind me, so I thought he was the one who helped me out. But I don't think Sasuke's hand was this large. <coughs> I inhaled too much smoke. It hurts. <coughs> was that Nanamoto's voice? I have to respond. But I think I just blacked out. Uh... And we're going to go ahead and break here. We've obviously been kidnapped. So that's a good breaking point, I think. We'll figure, we'll find out who took us and exactly where we're waking up in the next episode. Well, I'm sure it's somebody with Adonis. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be someone we know. So, hope to see you in that next episode to find out. Oh my god, I had no idea Shidoshi's route was going to be this awesome. The setup is really good. I really like Shidoshi so much. I can't wait to find, I can't wait to have all the facts cleared up about him. The, okay, I'm not going to gush anymore. <laughs> I just can't wait to, you know, till we find out everything that we can about him. Anyway, hope to see you there in the next video or some of my other ones. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. To really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.